share with you on how to enhance your public speaking and civic engagement skills. How to enhance your public speaking and civic engagement and mediation skills. One of the ways transformational change is being implemented in any society is through civic engagement. Civic engagement basically is when an individual or group of people come together to engage on certain activities that will lead to a transformational change. This is when they address issues of public concern. So for example, last year, I'm sure some of you can still remember, in October last year, there were a group of young people who came together and they challenged the status quo. They challenged the system. They said enough is enough. We cannot continue with this profiling and with this name that they call us. We are not the Yahoo boys in quotes that you people think that we are. And that movement led to the ENSAS protest, which was unfortunately hijacked by some people. Can you remember that? Yes. Fantastic. That was some kind of sick engagement. The opportunity for you to air your views. And this will mean that you are challenging the norm, the societal norm, that you think that, look, it's not correct based on your perception. And since I came here, I've been hearing one word from my brother and my friend, Mr. Barry. Can we appreciate this man? <laughs> what word is it that he was saying that really connected? Because it's part of what I've been talking about briefly. He said something about conviction. Conviction. For you to be able to engage successfully in a civic movement, you must one be a convict of your conviction. Did you hear what I said? Yes. I think it's, it's right like that. You must be a convict of your conviction. In other words, you must be so, so resolute that this thing that you are standing for, against all odds, this is what you believe. Conrad, conrad. You must be a convict of your conviction. And one of the tools to driving civic engagement is public speaking. Because you, you, you cannot effectively communicate your thoughts to your audience. It may lead to frustration. It may lead to misunderstanding. Um, I'm a person of faith. And when I was reading the scriptures and I saw what happened in Genesis 11, for those of you who are familiar with the Bible, there was a time that the whole world spoke one language. People were one, they had one language. And then they came up with a civic movement. Let us build a Torah that will lead us to heaven. Apparently, maybe they wanted to see God. And they engaged on this assignment. The scripture says, even if it attracted the presence of God, God came down and saw what the people were doing. He said, Wow, the people are one. What did he do? He didn't change their complexion. He didn't change their height. He confounded their language. So when the man who was requiring mortar for the bricklayers to bring bricks or whatever, when he said, get me mortar, the guy was hearing, something is wrong with your head. <laughs> I, I said, get me mortar, and hearing something is wrong with your head. And before you knew it, they started, you know, fighting, and it led to serious anarchy. That was what led to the abandonment of that project. What am I trying to say? As a person who wants to be a social influencer, Someone who wants to be a leader, you must learn how to effectively communicate. Otherwise, you cannot effectively pass across your thoughts and you will not be able to achieve that vision that you have on your heart. So I'll be sharing with you very quickly some of the tips on how to develop your public speaking skills. Let's first of all begin with the history of public speaking. Public speaking used to be called rhetoric in ancient Greece and Rome. That's what they used to call it. But then it graduated into being known as public speaking or the gift of the gap. In fact, that's what most of the uh, Western people will call it, the gift of the gap. All right? People who are so endowed 
with the ability to express themselves fluently. They, 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 so they, they do it effortlessly. That then they regard such people as mini gods because they have the capacity to ask people to do something and then they find out that these people just easily, without any kind of manipulation, they get into that space of carrying out the action. Because as a public speaker, you appeal to three parts of your audience. The first part is their head, their cognitive ability. For them to look at you and believe that you have something upstairs that connects with what they have upstairs. And number two, you appeal to their emotions. You speak to the heart of the people. You're speaking to the heart of the audience. You emotionalize your message such that you compel them to be able to do what you want them to do by influencing them. And then you're speaking thirdly to their hand. Their hand is where these people now lead themselves to taking action towards everything that they've said. And that's the highest point that a public speaker will look at himself and say, I have done well. That you stand before any audience and then you pass a message to them or across to them and you see that they take action. You know, when you stand before any people, you stand before an audience, two things can be, you know, behind the mind of the, the speaker. If you're standing for the cause of entertainment, we did that when I started. We were just trying to, you know, to catch up, to connect, all right? But if we are going to engage in civic movement, the purpose of your doing that is not to entertain the people. It's to cause them to move from where they are to where you want them to be. Leadership is about two things. I need to write them down. Manifestation and movement. Leadership is about manifestation and movement. Manifestation being that you first of all discover who you are. Knowing who you are, knowing what you stand for, knowing your conviction, and then asking the people to move from where they are to where you desire them to be. Are we together on that? Are we together on that? So it's very important that you understand that for you to engage or embark on any social movement or any civic engagement, you must first of all know why you want to do it. What's your why? Because every civic engagement is a platform to emerge new leaders. So when I think of people like Mother Teresa, People like Nelson Mandela, people like uh, Sarsin Limpingli. These are people who emerged from situations that were not palatable. I use the NSAS movement as a case study, for example. It was a crisis kind of situation that led to this kind of leaders. Nelson Mandela, oppression in South Africa. And they said they can't take it anymore. And then because of his conviction that this is my country, why would you tell me not to sit down or to get into some kind of spaces? That because it's for only whites. And there were people who obeyed the law, but they said, I will not obey this law. It was a civil disobedience to the law. Like Mahatma Gandhi, who through fasting, that I'm not going to eat food, even though you put me in this prison, I won't eat a morsel of bread until the oppression is stopped in this nation. And everybody went on fast. When I imagine what he did, I, I, I thought about Nigeria. Can we really do a thing like that? No. When we are looking for food. <laughs> if Nigeria would become what God wants it to be through you and I, we must be people of integrity. Otherwise, we are wasting our time. With the NSAS movement, when the thing started, I told my wife, I said, look, I've analyzed this thing. It will end up like this. Why? Because it seemed as though there were people who, yes, they initially came in with the right mindset. But then they became distracted, either because of finances or fear of the system. And so they were influenced to be able to bring in other people, which were the good ones that eventually hijacked the system. Integrity is very key to your social engagement. Integrity is very key to embarking on any civil engagement. So, having said all of that, Public speaking is for the cause of something that is just, which you believe in as a person, who is the mediator, either between the government and the people, or between an organization and the people. And once that is done, that you understand why you want to do what you're doing, then you can be rest assured that following will be a matter of time, once you are a person of conviction. So let's see 
how then we can begin to develop these skills. Number one, we must have a desire. Not everyone truly wants to stand before a crowd to share. And I can understand that. But do you know that you are doing yourself a disservice? One of the importance of being a good public speaker is that it gives you leverages that your peers don't have access to. Once you can effectively communicate your thoughts across to the people in an organization, in a nation, you automatically emerge as their leader and you are given different opportunities that they are not privileged to, just simply by being able to share your thoughts mm -hmm. or talk effectively. You know, there's something called glossophobia when it comes to public speaking. Glossophobia is the fear of speaking in public. And it can be so bad that right now, if I ask some people to come to the front to just say what their name is, you see them begin to they will, they, will, they will project sweaty palms, you know, knee jerk and all of that. Their voices will start you know, trembling. But you can outgrow all of these things if you have a burning desire for it. So how bad do you really want to be in public speaker? That's the question. Philip D. Armour, which happens to be one of the great capitalists in America, he said he would rather be a great public speaker than to have been a great capitalist when he discovered the importance and the power of public speaking. These guys, in the ancient days, were regarded as gods. That you can just charge a group of people to say, right now we're going to ask you all. And you give them reason why they're going to ask you all. Without anybody asking you for transport there, everybody is rushing down to a golf ring and they're entering buses to Abuja. We are indeed going to ask you all. These were things that made people like Julius Caesar take over, you know, England, today's England. When he got to that space and his, his, his army came down from the ship, he charged them and said, look, listen, look down the cliff. And when they looked down, they saw that their ships were all in flames. They said, right now, we are either going to conquer these people or we all die. And with the burning desire that he had to survive, the survival instinct that he had kicked in, and they ensured that they took over the land. That's the power of having burning desire. But then again, that's the power of public speaking. To have engaged the people, sharing your thoughts and your cause, and having people say, we are with you all the way, with a very powerful conviction. You must be dedicated to the cause. One of the ways to actually test your determination is how long have you been doing what you have been doing? He said something which is very profound that in maybe five, ten years from now, there are certain things that he knows may not change about the kind of content he will put out there from some of the speakers or so that he has mentioned. And why is that? Because that is what they are made of. That is what they, they saw on the inside of them when they started the journey. Although it is true that sometimes you may evolve. You may evolve. If when you started a project, there was, no, there was no clarity to it. In the process, there may be some kind of clarity that will give you the opportunity to tweak. But it doesn't really mean that you will change out of that scope completely. So give room for flexibility. That's the point I'm trying to make. When you are trying to drive home you know, your, your civil rights or your civil engagement, give room for flexibility. Don't be too... Uh, 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 rigid, exactly, that's the word. In the process of meeting new people, they may discover something about you that you never knew you had inside of you. That's the importance of getting mentors. People who can engage you and draw out your strength that you never thought you had. It's very important. So it's a test of your determination. How well have you been doing that thing you've been doing now? How long have you been doing this? And then, you must practice. You know, there's a guy uh, who, who used to be the fastest man in the world. What's his name? Hussein Bolt. Hussein Bolt does not wait until when it's the next Olympics before he starts practice. As a matter of fact, 
when he leaves this Olympics and he gets home, he gives himself a few days and is back in the fight. Whereas, you know, some of us here in Nigeria, we say it is when it's like two weeks to exactly. and that's when we do the How fight you meet? approach. Mm -hmm. You must be consistent, you must be dedicated, you must be determined, and must have a you know, burning desire. That's the only way that when you have a vision to drive a social project, that you come out with a speech that is compelling, you have people who will follow you. Because people won't just follow you because they like your face. They must be able to connect with that thing that you stand for. And that's where influence comes in. Uh, the, 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 the words of John C. Maxwell, he says that everybody communicates, but only people who connect. Until I connected with the vision of the app network that made me avail myself to their project, that I left everything that I'm supposed to be doing today, and I traveled to be here just to support these people. So the question is, what is that thing that you have in your heart, which you probably have been, you, you, you think that you are not qualified for? This is an environment to give birth to. You don't have to wait until uh, someone like Mr. Zion had an accident and then he had a wake up call to say, I have to do it now. Some of you are long behind on your dreams and your goals. For those of you who are married, your husband had to do correct public speaking to first one. And then they did a proposal before you agree. True or false, ladies? <laughs> If the guy did not know how to express himself, except he just loved him, if then you would have been wondering, what is he talking about? That's the power of public speaking. Public speaking would make people do what ordinarily, maybe they did not want to do, but you were able to influence them by the way you packaged your message and presented it to them. Now, what do we need to take into consideration when going before an audience? This is very important. As a public speaker, there are certain things that you must take into consideration before going before any audience. Number one is your outward, your, your outward presentation. Your outward presentation. No matter how packaged the content is that Mr. Barry shared just now, if you came here with bathroom slippers and three quarter shorts and maybe sleeveless, I'm sure you won't take him seriously. Draw a You'll be wondering what kind of guy is this. No one will listen to me. My head they won't listen to me. Somebody will walk out on the end. So your outward presentation is very, very important. When we say this, we are not trying to say that go and break the bank to you know get a nice jacket or whatever. If you can afford it, fine. But I'm not subscribing that you go out borrowing because you want to look great. But with the little that you have, package it well together. It also helps the people believe in your message. You must be able to show empathy. Empathy. It's not just about you, you, you. What are the people also going through? So every public speaker is a great listener. He's a great listener. They listen to the things that are said and the things that are not said. And when you now come to share with the people, with the cause that you have in mind, to driving a movement in your society, it has to connect to the heart of the people. It now shows that you understand what they're doing. That's why when our politicians come to convince us to give them our votes, they look at what we really need. And what do we really need in Nigeria? It's food. 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 So that's why it's not about infrastructure. So that's why when they go to the, the, the different polling units, you hear that they are sharing oh, rice. rice. Oh, the last one I heard was like it was two cups of rice. <laughs> <laughs> and you will sell your conscience, you will sell your goals for almost eight years for two cups of rice. For two cups of rice. Two cups of rice. Please, as I begin to round up my session. 
civic engagement is very important if you must see a transformation in this nation. You and I must get involved in the process. And getting involved in the process means, therefore, that we must go get our PBC. Means, therefore, that from now, begin to develop yourself on how you can, with public speaking, knowing what your conviction is, it will not be too difficult to convince somebody to, to go the path that you believe is right and good. And I think with this, we can together be a great engineer of our dreams. Thank you very much.